Hey Pinksters and welcome to today's Coffee Break Python. When I first learned about regular expressions, I, I didn't really appreciate their power. So, um, but there's, there's like a reason why regular expressions have survived seven decades of technological disruption. <laughs> really think about it, seven decades. So um, since the beginning, since the dawn of computing, uh, regular expressions have been around and regular expressions have been very popular. And uh, like if you look at the Google search trends, regular expressions are still as popular as they are like many, many years ago. And uh, when like Kleene, you may know the Kleene star, so when Kleene, he was a computer science professor, when he invented these concepts and, and also with the help of Alan Turing and all these um, uh, like inventors and like the big names in computer science, when they created regular expressions, um, they did it in a very fundamental and, and theoretically sound way so that these concepts survived even into um, into into today's today's world of um, computing and even as a programmer today regular expressions are highly highly relevant so in today's video we are going to look at um, Python regex search so the search it is a, uh, so Python comes with a with a very advanced regular expression package called Python re or Python regex which is a new version of Python re and we particularly look at the search uh, method so it's a it's a it's a method uh, from from the uh, function I should say from the regular expression uh, um, package so the first question is how does re.search work so first of all we need to import the regular expression library in Python it is called re so you just have to imp type in import re maybe you have to install it with pip install regex or pip install re the newer version would be regex but still most people use re so re is fine with us and um, most like documentation also is around um, Python re the re package so I think it's fine uh, to still use the Python re package um, good so how does a, a re.search method work so just type in re.search you see it has three arguments. The first one is a pattern. The second one is a string. The third is a flex argument. The pattern, so um, but by definition from documentation, uh, it scans through the string, which is the second argument, looking for a match to the pattern. Okay, so it, it tries to find a substring in our string that matches the pattern. And it returns a match object if it finds one. Match object is a specific object that is designed uh, to be very helpful for you to extract the matching substring from from your original string um, if it finds one or none if there was no match and um, okay so that's it and we, you can also can can define an optional flags argument this is a more advanced modifier that allows you to customize the behavior of the re.search function and um, yeah we'll explore this in a moment but first of all we we, we maybe ha should have an example should look at an example so say you have the uh, match object m so we call it m and we we run the search function on which do we search the function so say we search for the following pattern h point 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 o so here the point this is a dot um, regex pattern and the dot regex means match an arbitrary character so any char character okay so say we, we want to match any word it starts with an h ends with an o and matches three characters um, in between and so this is our pattern uh, which we want to search and now we need to define the string like hello world for example now let's see can you already figure out the match here <laughs> so let's let's print the match object okay so we so we run this and the match object yeah here you see it's an object representation and it it looks cryptic but it has some some re relevant information so first of all um sorry let's move this back so first of all uh we have the so the match object here you see it's a it's a match object and it gives us the indices these are the indices uh with respect to the original string which we passed into the match function which was this hello world so from index zero inclusive to index five exclusive, we, we have found a match. And this is like the match object represents this match that was found by the Python regular expression engine. Okay, so we have a match between zero and five, five excluded. Five would be this empty space, but this is excluded, so we match here. So this 
part of the original string matches our, our, our um, pattern. And then it also gives us the matching string so that you can actually, you, we don't have to look at the indices, but you can. Um, yeah, so and this, this gives us the string hello. So hello would be a match. And the search me method just looks for, for a match, um, um, yeah, any, anywhere in the, in, in the string. Okay, so that's, so that's, for example, what happens if you have, um, if you have hi hello world, let's run this and check if it still produces a match. Okay, now you see it still matches the string and um, it still matches hello, but now the positions of course has changed because we have added three characters, hi and an empty space to our uh, original string. So therefore the match is like uh, three characters later but we still have found, found a match. And this is the most important difference to another regular expression method called match. So intuitively, if you look for a match, you just call this method, but this method would not match this match the string. It would return none. Why? Because the match method just tries to match at the beginning of the string. So it tries to match here um, at the beginning of, the, of, of your string. It tries to match the pattern that is defined here, but in the beginning of the string cannot match it. So therefore the match is zero okay so and therefore the most often used method to match a pattern in a string is the search method not the match method this is like contraintuitive but you just have to uh, re uh, remember this that the search method is more important and more general than the than the match method because it it matches anywhere in the string and um, good okay so this produces a match object so now how does the match object work so now you can here at this point we have um, Maybe let's execute this again. Refresh it. Okay, at this point we have, uh, so we can print the match object M. This is our, our current match. And now we can we can call some functions on the match object, such as start function. The start function then gives us the start index three. We can also uh, call m.end, which gives us the end index eight. So it gives us some information uh, meta information about our match where it occurred and so on and this is the advantage of the match object um, so if it would just return the matching substring hello then we wouldn't have any information about the start and stop index and so on for, of, of the matching environment and uh, it, it wouldn't give us any information and now you can for example we can use um, yeah so I think I think this is enough about the match object so match object gives us some more information some functions we can execute here on 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 the on the match object and you see you can see there are a lot of functions like this so we can use the end post function expand group last group position all all kind of things even string and so what happens if i if i, if I type in m dot string i haven't ever actually used this but probably it's a matching string no it's not callable. Okay, so somehow, so you can match different number of, uh, so, so you can use different number of functions, but the most important one are um, the start and the stop index and also the matching substring. Um, good, so let's have an example, another example um, for the regular expression library here uh, for the read.search function, say we have the following text. Um, it's, an, it's an excerpt from Shakespeare, ha, let me see her out alas he's cold and so on and um, now we can we can for example we can type in um, print re.search say we search for her and we pass the text now we can do any advanced text processing here just passing in the text and this gives us the match object for the first occurrence um, of the of the um, of the pattern her and her of course it's just a trivial pattern um, but still I mean so the string her matches at position 20 in the string okay so it um, actually this one would be the first match why because it is case sensitive so we have uh, if we have a uh, capitalized word then this will not match it will actually match also the capitalization of the of the um, string and now you can also So there's another function called find all and the find all function. Let's have a look at the word that, okay. So the find all function is different. So now maybe let's, let's keep the search function and copy this. 
So the search function returns a match object of the first occur occurrence. The find all function just returns a string of all occurrences um, of the string in the text. Okay, so we have three occurrences of the string here in the text. So therefore it gives us three times the matching substring. Okay, so and if you would have a more complicated pattern then it will give you all the textual matches. So it will, it will just find the textual matches in the string and it will find all textual matches. But then you don't have any meta information about the start position of the match and the stop position of the match if you if you use the find all function. So this is the main difference between the search function and the find all function. Search function finds only the first occurrence, but then it returns a match object which is more general generally usable. Um, the find all function gives us all matches in a, in a, in a list of matches and uh, that of words that actually match of substrings that match the pattern. So that, this is the main difference between read.search and read.find all. We have already seen the main difference between read.match and read.search. If you, uh, yeah, you can see read.match here doesn't uh, return none. Why? Because it matches only at the beginning of the string. So her is not at the beginning of the string. At the beginning of the string we have a new line character here. So therefore there is no match. Okay. So this is the main difference between those two functions. And those three functions search, find all and match are the mostly uh, the most frequently used uh, regular expression functions to uh, find to analyze text textual patterns. Um, Good. Now the next question is how to use the optional flag argument, the flags argument. Um, let's have a look at an example. So, for example, if you have the, if you have a simpler text, say Python is great. We can we can print read out search. What do we search? We search for Python, but now we uppercase the whole word and we pass in the text. And now we can. Uh, so if you if you do this and close it, then it won't find anything, right? <coughs> Sorry. So it returns none um, because because we don't find uh, any any um, pattern in the text because Python is capitalized here or pattern is capitalized and uh, in the text we don't have this capitalized pattern. How so? How do how do we fix it? So if we want to um, ignore capitalization, basically this sometimes it's it's so for example if you have a text and you search for Bitcoin occurrences. To do some ana further analysis, then you don't care if it is capitalized or not. So, uh, what do, what do you do that now? Now you pass in the flex argument, and you set it to re dot. So you can simply call re dot, and now you get a um, number of possible flags that you can set. All these uppercase ver uh, variable names, basically these are integer numbers. They are flags that indicate. Um, that allow you to customize the regular expression processing engine. For example, you can uh, type in ignore case. So usually if you have a special request for the engine, so for example, ignoring the capitalization uh, or any other like um, um, multi-line analyzing multi-line strings or um, local um, or say um, Having using special special regular expression symbols um, and so on, uh, switching them off or on. So if you do want to do anything advanced in your matching process, then you can use the ignore case. Uh, uh, you, you can use these one one of those given flags. There are many many other flags. I have written an, another article and I have created another video about the different flags in Python. But all, mostly you won't use them actually if you because you are just happy with the default matching. But one of the most frequent uses of the flags is this ignore case flag, and this will basically then result in a situation where, where your regular expression engine just ignores the capitalization of the string. So now it still finds a match Python, even if it looks different than our search pattern here. So our search pa pattern Python is uh, uppercase, all uppercase. So um, and here we have like only the first character is um, capitalized, um, and still we find the match. Good. So this is how how you can use the flex um, argument. You can also you can check out the other flex by finding my blog article. I will give a link in the description below um, about the different flex in Python. But mostly you will use it to ignore the case. So if you know this, if you know ignore case, 
then you are mostly done with it. If you want to learn more about regular expressions, then check out our book, The Smartest Way to Learn Python Regex. So we have, there's another book called A Smarter Way to Learn Python. So we thought, okay, what is a, a natural uh, progression? The superlative, it's the smartest way to learn Python. And we focused our strategy, our, our, our book writing to, to regular expression processing because many, many, um, ex many expert coders, for example, the tech lead, you may know uh, the tech lead, um, recommend regular expression as one of the most important skills you can have as a programmer, one of the top five skills actually. So um, at Google, of course, they do a lot of text processing, but also other companies such as Amazon, Facebook, and so on. Uh, a lot of data in the web still is textual data um, and computers are able to process textual data more efficiently than humans. And if you want to be able to control these computers and control the efficiency of text processing, then you need to know about regular expressions. So check out our book, The Smartest Way to Learn Python Regex. I also give a link in the description below. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this video. Uh, if you like it, then uh, give, me, give me a comment or a thumbs up and uh, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.